Hello and welcome. Today we will look into the understanding of MVC architecture. So as the name says it is MVC architecture, it is model, view, control. Now this MVC architecture can be depicted easily by most of the technologies which you come in, which you get across in the day to day life. But this tutorial is basically on Java platform. So let's get started. Let's assume that I have somebody as an end user who is trying to make a request and the request when somebody is trying to make on the web and this request which I try getting is of type HTTP. To be a little specifically, I would also use the version called as HTTP 1.1 which happens to be the stateless protocol. Now any request which comes to the server in our case, it happens to be a web server and I would say it is Tomcat. There are a lot of other competitors for Tomcat, which could be a Glassfish, your know, WebLogic, WebSphere and so on. But just to depict, I've got a name called as web server called Tomcat. Now any request inside the container in the Tomcat, which you try getting, will go or it has to pass through a special person by name called as web.xml. Now this happens to be one of the configuration files which has to be must use. People if you are, you are, tr you are trying to use Tomcat 7.0 you can bypass this you can try using at the rate servlet. Either you can make an entry of the servlet which you are trying to write in web.xml or you can have at the rate web servlet as an annotation. Many times this web.xml is also called as deployment descriptor right a lot of people try using this name called as deployment descriptor now once you try getting the url from the client or from the end user this url has to be checked against web.xml if it is validated then it will get into the execution mode failing which they it will give you an error called as 404. This is also called as page not found, which is the client has made a request for a service and the service is not available. Now let's consider I have a request which is been given to the server and it is valid. The control goes from here to somebody called as controller. Now this word called as controller is quite common in most of the technologies so let me put controller the controller in our case happens to be servlet okay now servlet is one point of contact for all the jobs which you want to execute for a request which you got from the client now servlet is the one the responsibility of the servlet is to take request and a response and do a dip on it which is I call it as deep inspection of a packet because every request which you try getting it it has to be dipped in and it attract extracts request and response all the parameters which you try sending which will be sent via request now I can extract this data and I can call to a special person who is called as DAO. Now this DAO happens to be data access object. Okay. Now all of our business logics or your POJOs will get into this DAO. So this is basically a POJO which is plain old Java object. So all your business logics will go. Of course when you are trying to pass some data from controller to DAO we try using a bean for passing the data between the controller and the DAO which is obviously a good way of passing the data. Now the DAO is one point of contact where it has a business logic i.e. is responsible to talk to any persistent storage. The persistent storage in your case could be a database or it could be a ERP system or it could be XML file or what not. Now database gives an acknowledgement either it is a result set which is returned 
provided if you are giving a select statement or an integer depending on the DML operation which you try give. The DAO finally renders or gives the output back to the controller and once if this is done the DAO job and database job is completely done. The controller now is a responsible person to give the control to somebody who can show things beautifully. In our case it will be view. <coughs> now this view uh, most of the times will be JSP or it could be JSF and so on. There are a lot of other people who try doing it. Maybe there are a few implicit tags which you can try exploring in which is called as JSTL. This is one of the tags which we try using it which is implicitly available. Now the controller gives the control. It tries setting it as a parameter or object and gives it to the view. View renders it very nicely and finally hands it over to client. So we have model which is also called as a DAO view which is a view either it is JSF, JSP or JSTL and of course you got a controller. Thanks you for watching this tutorial.